Hey everyone, welcome back to Wizarding Alice. My name is Alice. On this channel we cover all things Harry Potter, Wizarding World and a bit of Scotland travel and lifestyle thrown in there as well. So if that sounds like something that interests you, be sure to subscribe below. Today, you can probably tell by the headphones, I'm doing another, I'm going to take them off, another Harry Potter rewatch, which is so exciting. I've had amazing feedback from this series so far, so thank you so much for that. So I'm very excited to go on to the next installment, which is Goblet of Fire. Number four, I think my least favourite Harry Potter film, if I'm being perfectly honest, this is probably the one I've been least looking forward to filming. Um, but yeah, let's just, let's see, I haven't watched it in a while, so maybe my opinions will change. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the film. I should say, as per usual, I've got my fan on the go because it is hotter than high heavens here today. Uh, so I apologise about the slight droning noise going on. We've obviously moved on to a new director as well. Alfonso Cuaron is out the door, sadly. And I think it's Tom Hooper now. Am I right in thinking that? Or is that the guy who directed Cats? Anyway, <laughs> I should have looked that up beforehand. It's someone new. Um, and I think, I think he did a good job, but I'm glad he didn't helm the rest of the series. I also think it's cool that obviously this one doesn't start in the same format as all the rest. We are not at the Dursleys. Um, that being said, I very much miss the Dursleys from this installment. I think they provide some much needed longevity and uh, the actors obviously the comparison to his life at Hogwarts and yeah, sorely missed in this one I think. So I think my understanding of this whole series of events is obviously Tom Riddle's mother gave Tom Riddle's father, aka Tom Riddle Sr, a love potion so he'd fall in love with her and they had a child, Tom Riddle aka Voldemort. Um, the spell then wears off and Voldemort's dad like obviously leaves and meets a whole other woman and has children with them and lives in this grand house and one of his children is also called Tom Riddle Jr because he basically like disowns Voldemort and then Voldemort comes in and kills his dad and the new wife and all the children and stuff hence why there's a Tom Riddle Jr headstone which I think they only show in the books I don't think they show in the film um, and then he takes over this house um but this but that must have been years and years and years before this he's obviously just come back oh stressful stressful stuff <laughs> i think i got it right we're about to see him we're about to see him <laughs> sparkly vampire Okay, it's taking longer than I thought. Hey! Cedric! Our Pats in his most notable role. <laughs> I love Robert Pattinson, I really do. He's so unbothered. <laughs> well, this is actually sad when you think about the fact that the next time Cedric and Harry are touching a port key, it's to go to the graveyard. That's sad. Oh, she passed away? Oh. Mm. All right. I love how they did the campground for the World Cup. It's like exactly how I imagine it. It's fantastic. I hate this line that Harry's about to say. It's so cringy. It's actually a lot of the writing in this I don't really like. I just, it makes me cringe inside. I couldn't tell you why, I just hate it. <laughs> if you got a seat in the very bottom row of the stadium, you'd be pissed. <laughs> you'd be like this the whole time. <laughs> You'll be the first to know. First to know. We're about to see the biggest cinematic disappointment in the entire world in a second. <laughs> The fact that they missed out the Quidditch World Cup is 
devastating. They could have done so many cool things with these and they didn't. Oh, devastating. I'm gonna try not to just complain the entire time, but this film, I, this isn't a new opinion, I know, but this film really could have benefited from being split into two. I am a firm believer in split this into two. It's like halfway through the series, nice sort of break. Um, so it's not like totally random and then make the last one one film. I think it would have made so much more sense. This is really scary. Speaking of positives, they do this whole thing really well. They're so scary. I mean, obviously they're supposed to look like the KKK, so they're going to be scary, but that's terrifying. I would literally cry if I was anywhere near the vicinity of those guys. I'm absolutely decked. <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't out for longer. Christ almighty. I mean, he's very lucky. I mean, there's a bunch of Death Eaters going around. They've burnt the entire camp, but young Harry Potter lying on the ground, unharmed. <laughs> I'm also going to try and not talk about all the, you know, things that got missed out with. I've made my point that I think they should have included more and made it into two films, but the lack of Winky <laughs> is such a shame. And I do think it completely changes the tone of the films. I do feel like Winky is, I don't want to say comic relief because her story is quite tragic, but kind of lighten things up a bit. Obviously makes the mystery elements of it more interesting because you've got Ludo Bagman and Crouch and Winky and I forgot the name of the other guy. <laughs> it just, it just makes, I just, I've completely lost track of what I'm saying. It's just more interesting. Everyone's got so much hair. I know, again, it's been said before, but Christ almighty, get a haircut. <laughs> and again, look, we immediately jump into everyone else arriving. It's not even been explained. What's this carriage doing here? What's the boat doing here? Like, everyone's already settled in. It's crazy in the books if you haven't read them. They, their contestants don't come until Christmas. So you've got a whole three months um, of Hogwarts activities before all this kicks off. It's, it's intense how fast this film goes and it's two and a half hours as well. It's not short. Again, said it all three other commentaries, the music, fantastic. This is the last thing I'm going to complain about, I promise, but this is so sexist. Like, that they have to be all feminine and girly. Number one, Beaubaton is not an all-girls school, first of all. And then, like, they took a random shot of their butts. It's like, this is a children's film. Like, I just think it's ridiculous. And, and same issue with the men's one. I, yeah. I'm hating this film more and more now I'm watching it. I do really like Mad Eye Moody as a character, I'll give her that. I think he's really cool. I know he's obviously not Mad Eye Moody at this point, but still, I think he's a cool character. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to complain anymore, but I forgot about this scene. What is this? What is he doing? We know he doesn't put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire. That is what this scene is insinuating. No one else is around, so what's he doing? If you can explain that scene, I'll take it, but... It makes no sense. It's purely misdirect. <laughs> I couldn't sit on a bench for a solid hour. I need more back support. Maybe it's just because I'm old, but I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I love that. I, he's such a good character. He's so underrated. So funny. <laughs> Shame he's not in more of the films going forward. I mean, I know he's here and there, but not really. I would die. I would leave the school and not return. Ooh. Ooh. Makes me feel sick. <laughs> this is devastating. We Neville's face is so heartbreaking. And you know, I don't they do explain why, I think, in the fifth one, but they don't explain why he has this reaction in this one, right? It makes no sense. Anyway, it's sad nonetheless. <laughs> 
No, don't do it, Cedric. Don't do it. Don't ask me why, just don't do it. This movie is going so fast. I'm getting whiplash. Oh my gosh. I forgot how quickly we moved through all the scenes. I suppose there's a lot to cover. It makes sense, but wow. There's a baller looking cup. I'll give him that. I would want to win it too. Uh oh. What's this? I'm being such a brat. I hate myself today. <laughs> I just, I struggle with this film sometimes. I do. Whose name could possibly be coming out of the Goblet of Fire? I forgot his name for a second there. <laughs> Who could it be? No. <laughs> Harry if I was Harry, I'd be so tired. I'd be like, no, Harry not this year. <laughs> I have saved this school. I've saved all of your education three years in a row. I will not do it again. Ron is such an ass in this film. <laughs> I get teenage angst, jealousy, all the rest of it, but seriously, what an ass. Like the fact he doesn't believe him, it's ridiculous. I'm not even going to talk about the Rita Skeeter stuff because I think it's just so poorly done. Like I think the character is so creepy and that's not what she's supposed to be at all. And obviously her whole Animagus stuff never turns into anything, so I don't know why they've even included her character anyway, when none of the actual plot is included. Oh, I'm just in love with that common room. Is it not just the most amazing place? I, if I sat in one of those chairs, I would be asleep like that. I could do with that. I did not have a good night's sleep last night, so could really do with a nice cushy armchair in front of the fire. They missed the part in the books where Harry absolutely yeets something at Ron. I don't remember what it is, but he just chucks something at his head. <laughs> so stupid. Hagrid is such a little snitch for this. Harry is not supposed to know what's going on for the first task. <laughs> Literally me. Harry is having quite the five minutes. He went from talking to Cedric to having a fight with Ron to fighting with Draco. <laughs> it's not relented. I need to take the rest of the afternoon off after five minutes like this. This is amazing. I love this scene so much. <laughs> But McGonagall just makes it even better. Is that a student? It's so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Teaching. <laughs> I'll give this film this scene. It's very good. I love how every task is designed for the audience to have a terrible time. Flies away with the dragon, can't see anything. Underwater, can't see anything. In a maze, can't see anything. Makes you think. If I was the Hogwarts student this year, I would be loving this. I know I said you can't see anything, but say you could. How much fun would it be just to watch these challenges? Oh, I love it. This bit is so cool. I'll give him that. I'm trying to think of more compliments. This bit where he goes and jumps on the broomstick. It's awesome. I love it. I don't know. I just think it's so cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. That dragon was not supposed to break free. He could sue the heck out of the school. And I think he'd get quite a lot of money. This is good too. This is funny. I'll also give it this. <laughs> that always makes me laugh. It's so good. 
I've actually got those dress robes as a little Christmas bauble. You can get them, I think you can get them online in the Harry Potter shop, but I got them for the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. I've got the dress robes and I've got Hermione's dress as well. And I think you could get Harry's like tuxedo, but I thought that was a bit boring, so I didn't get that one. I love when someone pointed out that Snape would have had to have taught the Slytherins to dance. So funny. I love that they included this in the film. I'm pretty sure this isn't a scene in the books, but it's perfect. Having attended school dances before, the girls are not that eager to dance. I'll tell you that much. I love the extra warning. You can't do that. This is so good. I'll I'll give it to the film. Now I'm watching it again. When it nails the funny oh. scenes, it really nails the funny scenes. I'll give it that. Oh, this is like one of my favourite bits of music. I like clutch my pearls. Because <laughs> this music, Harry and Winter, is what they play when you, in the Warner Brothers Studio Tour, when you go into the Hogwarts set, like model. So, very nostalgic. Or sentimental, I should say. That is a representation of me pretty much every night after work, <laughs> just lying like half dead on the sofa. <laughs> I love Hermione's reaction there. I'm warming up to this film. I'm warming up to it. Oh, this is making me jealous. If you didn't hear, um, next year, 2023, um, Wizarding World are hosting a series of Yule Balls that you could attend. I think it's a bit like the Bridgerton experience that was about for a while. Um, but it's nowhere near me. There's one in Italy um, and it's just too far and too expensive for me to go to. And then there's one in Canada, America and Mexico, which I just, again, I can't afford to go, but devastated. How cool would it be to experience that? If you're going, I'm so jealous not big enough of an impact unfortunately they should have like i can't think what they should have done maybe like a big ass dress i hate this i hate this so much it does not fit the theme of the whole film at all it doesn't fit the vibe does not pass the vibe check <laughs> Ron is literally the worst person in this film. <laughs> He's awful. <laughs> He's self sabotaging You guys seen that TikTok of the guy who he's like a frat boy that goes to Hogwarts and he's like he's never wearing a top but he's always got his backpack on and he's like kind of in love with Cedric a little bit. If I could find it, I'll put it in. How how are you? Cedric, you Hungarian horntail, how are you, bud? Look, I realize I never really thanked you properly for- The hippogriff ride? <laughs> Dude, ain't no thing. Hold on tight, spider monkey, am I right? <laughs> exactly. You know the prefect's bathroom on the fifth floor? Oh my god, yeah? <laughs> what? It's not a bad place for a bath. <gasps> Cedric, dude, you're so bad. Huffle, please. Come on. Just take your egg and- Eggs, okay, yeah, I'm like kind of rocking a different situation downstairs, but we'll make it work, dude. Mull things over in the hot water. Ah! <laughs> so fun. Later. Oh, hey, Harry, good. I, I wasn't, good to see you here. I definitely wasn't expecting Cedric and slamming. Uh, <laughs> The way he helps Harry out with each task is really clever, like feeding information to key people. Very smart. They do such a good job with how this looks. It really freaks me out. I've definitely got, I can't remember what it's called, but that phobia of like deep, dark water. Mm -mm, not a fan. <laughs> I feel bad for Fleur, she pretty much decks in every single challenge, <laughs> bless her, she does not have a good time. <laughs> I love that they've designed the mermaid tails to 
resemble shark fins rather than going out like that there's one on the top and one on the bottom that's such a neat little detail I just think it's so cool it makes them look more unique and more dangerous I guess This is crazy. He must recognize that it's his son somehow. He must do, because what else does that look about? And he realizes he knows. I love this. I really wish they'd included more of this stuff. I've even leant forward. <laughs> so, Moody killed him. Crouch killed him because he knew too much, I guess. So first look at the pensive, or the pensons, as I like to say. Becomes a familiar favorite. The next, well, all the next book slash films. Perhaps too familiar. It gets a bit boring after a while. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> he knows how to create some drama. He shouldn't have run! He shouldn't have run! That made him look guilty. David Tennant in his most prominent role. <laughs> Hello, father. Oh, that licking thing is so gross. Oh, but that's what Barty Crouch does, isn't it? I've just put that together. That's how he knew it was him. I wonder if Harry looked on the Marauder's map, it would surely come up as Barty Crouch Jr. That does happen in the books. It's been a while since the Red Goblet of Fire. They've omitted it from here, but it just says Barty Crouch, so he thinks it's the older one. Never mind. I really want one of these Triwizard tops that they've got. You know, Harry's got the red one, and Cedric's got the yellow one. I want one. When you know one's covered, it really hurts. Oh, the hedges are really creepy. <laughs> they did this task dirty though. It's rubbish. If you haven't read the books, read that one chapter when they're in the maze. Honestly, go to the library, get a free copy. Just read that chapter. I don't care if you're like, oh, but I don't really like reading. You'll see. This, I think this is the biggest departure from the books, is what this maze is like. It's so good in the freaking book. And this is just a maze. It's just a maze. This would be my worst nightmare. Even in little mazes, I don't like it. I get all claustrophobic. I think I'm never gonna leave. I'm not a fan of a maze. I like one that's quite short, so you can like see over. Um, it's when it like really looms over you. I'm not keen. This is a normal walk in Scotland in winter. <laughs> that level of wind, everything blowing around. Throw a Scottish person in there, easy. I love this moment where he has to decide Cedric or the cup. And ironically, he should have picked the cup. And here's where it gets sad and then it doesn't really get happier after this for the rest of the series. Okay. Oh, a creepy looking little dude. Ugh. It's designed so well. Yeah. <laughs> it's done so effectively. It's so sad. Did he absorb the cauldron? This is so gross, it's amazing. Oh. So it's the idea that during the first Wizarding War, where Voldemort, you know, came to power and the original Order of the Phoenix were fighting him, that he just looked like a normal guy. And then he lost his body after encountering Harry. And this is what he looks like now, but I'm assuming that's not what he looked like before. This is like a new appearance. Much to think about. 
what's this spell called again? Or like effect? Is it priori incantatum? I think it is. For some reason I always want to say Memento Mori, which is the haunted magic of job. <laughs> this is gut wrenching. We'll celebrate. No. I was gonna say it's the most heartbreaking bit. I think Dobby dying might be my most heartbreaking bit, but this is close. <sighs> Devastation. so effective it's so good it just makes you feel really depressed this is the point where harry's starting to think oh no <laughs> just give me a break for one minute please so when voldemort said before that he had a loyal servant still at hogwarts i suppose you're supposed to assume that that's snape but really it's to crouch, I guess. I or maybe he is talking about Snape, I don't know. It's like Dumbledore like can already predict that in because obviously in the next film Harry's basically completely separated from everyone else by the government and by the media and things like that. It's like Dumbledore knows that that's gonna happen. It's quite interesting. Oh, they always do such a nice little ending. It always makes you feel like, ah. <laughs> Guys, I just filmed a whole outro and it wasn't recording. That's so annoying. But long story short, thank you so much for watching. That was Goblet of Fire. Generally speaking, um, I my feelings about it haven't changed. It's still probably my least favorite one, um, but I could appreciate that it does have some pretty funny moments and some really good bits in there. And that ending is just amazing. Um, I'm really looking forward to the films coming up. Order of the Phoenix is one of my favorites and I haven't watched Half-Blood Prince in so long. So it will feel a bit newer to me, whereas all these other ones I've kind of known what was coming next. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you next week. Bye.